We've all been in this scenario before. The game starts and your team really isn't playing that well in front of you. You let in a couple quick goals and it looks like your team's losing grasp of the game. Today in this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly what to do when this happens and your teammates aren't playing that well in front of you. By no means perfect in handling these situations. In fact, the reason I think I have so much experience and I'm able to give you guys advice on this is because I've had a lot of moments where I've been bad at it. But taking some time and having a plan for when things go wrong on the ice can help you better strategize to be prepared when this happens and possibly make the damage a lot less. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm doing YouTube videos every day and doing some live streams as well. And follow me on Instagram at attendylife. The first thing you want to do in this scenario, it's two goals go in, your teammates playing really bad in front of you, stay calm. I know it's a cliche, but it is so important. It's no secret that we wield a lot of power being goalies. We're the last line of defense and we have a ton of influence on the game. One of those influences that is always present in every game but is often overlooked is the emotional aspect. This really has to do with the morale of your team. After a goal goes in, all eyes are on you. Let's say you have a scenario where your team gives up a three on O and I'm back checking, everyone's had a terrible game. And then obviously a goal goes in. After the goal goes in, all eyes are on you. If you look unmotivated, if you look angry, if you look distraught over the fact that that goal went in, your team's gonna feel the same way. And they're going to have a negative mindset moving forward in the game. If you get up, stay calm, get a sip of water and move on, your team's gonna follow similar suit. If you look confident in the net, your team is going to be confident as well. As goalies, we have an unbelievable amount of influence on the morale of the team and their confidence. So it's important that we maintain our calmness so that the team has a sound mindset throughout the game, even in the rocky parts. And keeping this calm mindset leads me into my second point, which is don't blatantly criticize your teammates. After a defenseman leaves a wide open guy back door, or someone doesn't back check on a play, you might want to do something like this. Don't do that. This not only goes along with the last point of trying to keep your team calm and in the right mindset, it's also a way to deflect responsibility away from ourselves. Defensemen make huge mistakes, and these mistakes often lead us to very bad circumstances. But as goalies, we all know we are even capable of making impossible saves and bailing out our defensemen and our other teammates, including in near impossible scenarios. So it's important that you recognize that you give up a goal as a team and you win and lose as a team. So instead of saying, oh, you could have backjacked more, or accusing someone of something right away, just say, it's okay, we'll get the next one. Really build that camaraderie by saying, we're gonna get the next one, we're gonna go forward in a better mindset. Also, when you blatantly call out someone and say, what are you doing, especially in the moment, people automatically get defensive. They are in the wrong. They're not gonna have time to think and process. Everyone's going to be emotionally charged because you're in a bad position now that you've just given up a goal. It's not the time or the place to be calling people out. With that being said, there is a way to criticize people in a good way. In the intermission, maybe in between the first and the second period, or in the locker room before a game or after a game, go up to your teammate and say, hey, you know, you're a great player, but here's some things that I've noticed on the ice just from the goalie's point of view that I think you could fix. There are tons of constructive ways to tell your teammates they've done something that you don't like or something wrong without angering them in the moment or making matters worse. Just keep that in mind when you're in scenarios and you're trying to think about what's best in the moment for the team's success in the future. The third thing you're gonna do, and this is one of the harder things, something that it took me a really long time to learn, is play as if nothing has happened. There are a lot of famous quotes and a lot of famous sayings about goaltending that if you think about it, you lose. And I think there's a lot of truth behind that. If you think about, oh, I should have had that goal two goals ago, or I should have had that last goal, or geez, my teammate's playing awful today. You're not focusing on what's important, just doing your job. There's this one book that I read right before my last season of high school last year. It's called The Power Within. Uh, it's written by the same guys who made Goalie Guru. It's a great book. If you look up Power Within Goalie, you can probably find it on Amazon somewhere. The biggest takeaway I got from it was this one tip. This doesn't mean don't read the book. Definitely go get the book. There's so many tips. But the one that really helped me was just play in the moment. You can't think about anything else because anything else you're thinking about isn't important. You need to just play in the moment and do what's best for your team and do your job. And after reading that, I did, of course I had ups and downs, it's a normal season, but I was able to come in clutch, if you will, in a lot of scenarios that I don't think I would have been prepared for 
if I hadn't been playing in that mindset, talking, making tons and tons of saves and championship games where the odds were stacked against us, and really stepping up and having a successful season. And you need to have that same mindset when things are going bad. You gotta put the same effort in as if things are going good. Because overall, things aren't going to get any better if you just say, whatever, I'm not gonna play anymore. You need to continue playing at the highest level you possibly can. And the best way to do that is to play every moment of the game, whether you're winning or losing, whether things are going good or bad, the same way as you would no matter what. Number four is to give your team encouragement. If a teammate blocks a shot, don't be afraid to yell out and say, that was a great block. If a defenseman really keeps the guy to the outside, makes your job easy, don't be afraid to tell him after the play. Go up to him and say, hey, that was a great job angling the guy off. If your team scores a goal, maybe go up to your bench and fist bump all the guys when they come over. The point is give words of encouragement to your teammates, especially in saying good job after someone's done something right. It makes them feel good and it makes them more likely to repeat those actions in the future. If someone's in a good morale, they're gonna continue playing better and working hard. No one wants to work for a goalie that isn't giving them confidence. If you have a goalie that isn't being supportive, isn't being encouraging, they're gonna be less likely to play for that goalie. So giving words of encouragement just makes your teammates more likely to turn things around in a bad situation and is likely to have them work harder and be more confident in front of you. The last and final tip is to be a leader and try to turn things around. And this tip is kind of a combination of all the other four, but there's a couple different ways that a goalie can influence the game and really try to turn things around that I haven't mentioned yet. And some of these are risky plays, but if you're down, let's say you're down three goals and it's getting late in the game and you need to make something happen fast, you're gonna be willing to take a couple of risks. Don't be afraid to take that initiative. Within reason, but don't be afraid. Great example of this is when you're on the power play. If the other team, the penalty killing team, ices the puck, go out to the top of the circles or as far as you can out and try to stop that puck and pass it up to that winger. Team on the back of their heels and they're now wondering why the puck is behind three of their four guys even though they just iced the puck. That's kind of a tough way of describing that. I've actually gone over that method of passing the puck in a video called How to Get Points as a Goalie. I'll link it at the end of this one so you guys can watch it. But don't be afraid to play the puck is mainly what I'm trying to get at here. If you have the puck on your stick and you see an open guy outside the blue line and things haven't been going your team's way, try to rocket it there and get something started. If you can play the puck, if you can't play the puck, don't take that chance. If you see a guy coming in on a breakaway with his head down, don't be afraid to go for the Dominic Hasek diving poke check. Don't get yourself a penalty, go for the puck, and make that big play. But if you're not comfortable with all that, there's a lot of other ways that you can do this. You don't have to make risky plays to be a leader. A good way to be a leader on the ice during the whole game is to be loud. Shouting things like one on when a four checker is on one of your guys at the puck, or two on if there's two guys, you know, you know the drill. Making sure that your players know who's open, who's four checking them, what options they have, and being a part of your team's game, not just watching it and reacting to the puck. During the locker rooms and intermissions, Start some talking, start some strategizing with your defensemen. And also, obviously, with being a leader, go above and beyond on those four other steps and really give your team some confidence. That's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe down below. Follow me on Instagram at attendylife. Click one of these other videos on the screen. I have 30 to 40 videos on this channel which are all aimed at helping you become a better goalie. So it would definitely be in your benefit to watch some of these videos and and you might gain something from my perspective on some of these goalie and hockey topics. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.